Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to be carrying out a replacement of the clutch line uh, on my SV1000. The line that's currently fitted to the bike is the stock factory item. It's the, the rubber hose um, that goes between the clutch master cylinder and the clutch slave cylinder. It runs along the inside of the frame up to the bars and uh, yeah, uh, in order to change it, all we need to do is remove it from the bike, take the two banjo bolts out, drain the fluid out, obviously, uh, without spilling it all over the bike, and um, fit the new one. Now, the new one um, is a Hell Performance item, and here it is. Um, I've gone for a silver uh, braid with a clear uh, coating, stainless steel fittings, which are heat shrink at the uh, uh, heat shrunk at each end, um, and obviously I've got all the associated hardware to fit the kit. Also in this box, I've got front and rear brake lines, but they are going to be um, the subject of a completely different video. So uh, let me get the tools out. Let's uh, tear into it. Okay then, to begin, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna drain the uh, all the fluid out of the line. That way, it'll be less messy later on when we come to undo things. I'm gonna use my little vacuum pump. You've all seen me use this before. If you haven't, I'll leave a, uh, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and uh, check it out yourself. Uh, I'll pop it all together. I may need to get some new hoses. These are starting to discolor from the, from the fluid. Okay, right, take the little rubber cap off. Put that down there. Eight mil spanner. And pop the end over the bleed nipple. And crack her off. Okay, let's pump away. And draw the fluid. Out of the line. Okay, and I think we're about there. Maybe a little drop more, but that won't uh, that won't cause us any real dramas. Okay, let's close off the bleed nipple on the clutch slave cylinder and pop the tool to one side. Right then, what we'll do next is we'll um, we'll crack the banjo off at the slave cylinder and again at the top by the master cylinder and then we'll look at getting the old uh, the old hose removed from the bike. Right then, let's uh, let's get this hose uh, whipped off the bike. Um, let's get the banjo bolt undone, 12 mil spanner. Oh, that is incredibly tight. Let's try a, let's try a medium breaker bar. And there we go. That's better. Right, what I'm going to do, put a bit of workshop towel down to catch any spills which will come out. So I don't think I've got all the fluid out. And there we go. There's the uh, banjo bolt and both of the uh, both of the sealing washers. Okay, let's um, just get another bit of towel and just mop up any spills. There's a little bit. Obviously, if it gets any paintwork, get it off quickly. Um, and then uh, hopefully you'll be, you'll be all right as long as you don't leave it to sit on the paint. You should have too many dramas, but if it does get on your paint, get plenty of water on there and uh, 
flush it off and you should be okay. Right then. Now, obviously it runs up the inside of the frame, but it is clamped to the inside of the frame and there's three of them. One of them is just down here on the inside. The other one here also incorporates the idle control, which just pops off like so. And then the other one is just up here. Now each one of those is secured to the inside of the frame with a 10 mil bolt and they're incredibly weird and hard to get to. Um, however, you can do it. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna whip all three of those bolts out. I won't bore you with the details because it may take me a little while. I'll get all of those three bolts out and then um, we'll be in a position to pull the, uh, the, the hose through. Okay, I've got the first one out. Um, it is a bit of a pain and as you can see, um, there's the uh, there's a little bolt. The way I uh, actually managed it was to pop the spanner um, up in this gap here, well, down here as it goes, and then that I was able to get on the back of the bolt and then do it like this bit at a time. Uh, and to be fair, I only had to use a spanner about two or three times, and then the uh, the bolt came out with my fingers. So yeah, it was um, it was a bit of a pain to get into, and these two are going to be just as uh, just as difficult. So what I'll do, I'll get these two out, and then I'll bring it back in. Right then, that is all three brackets loosened on the inside of the frame. Um, I've already shown you how I did that one. This one here in the middle, I actually found easier to just use a really, really long extension and come into it from the other side of the bike. Um, and the one at the front, uh, access was very limited. So I used a uh, ratchet spanner with a flexible head and went in up here. Uh, and I was uh, just about able to get enough uh, purchase on it to be able to undo it. Okay. Next step I want to do is um, up here, there is um, a bracket where all the cables run through and here's the hose. So that is a 10 mil, a 10 mil uh, bolt underneath that needs undoing. This one should be okay because I've had this one off before when I did the heated grips. There's the bolt off, and there's the bracket off. Right, let me just pop the tool down there. Now, um, what I've got at the front here is I've got a little tie wrap that needs to be removed. Um, if I can avoid cutting it, I will, because I can reuse it then. just managed to undo it without breaking it okay right then what I've done I've got my tissue here which has got all the innards from the clutch reservoir sat on it um, next thing I need to do is undo the banjo on the uh, on the master cylinder and then we should be just about in a position to pull the uh, to pull the hose out I'm thinking that the easiest way to do it would be to take this bracket off the hose and then send the hose that way. Uh, that's what I uh, that's what I anticipate being the easiest. So let's get that uh, let's get that banjo bolt undone. Right, what I'm going to do? I'm just going to pop a bit of tissue down here just to catch any drips that may come out, and I'm going to crack this bolt off. Now this one might be really really tight as well. If it is, then it will be a case of. Getting the breaker bar on this one as well. Oh no, that one wasn't anywhere near as bad. Okay, let's undo this bolt. Catch the washers. And there we go. Right then, let me uh, pull this bracket off the hose. Let's get the hose out this side of the forks. Okay, there we go. We've got the retaining bracket just here around the rubber. It's around this rubber 
and this rubber like gasket I guess and there we go right let's pop that down there now what I'm going to try and do is pull the hose all the way through this way and hopefully it'll come out without too many difficulties pop them tools down there right let's have a go Very fiddly. This bracket here has got loads of hooks on it for cables and things to keep cables behind it. So it's a bit, a bit awkward. But there is room to get it out, I believe. cables that are inside. As you can see, see what I mean about all the hooky bits that stick out? They were catching on things and it's making it a little bit awkward to get her out. But here we go. And there we are. There is the standard clutch line removed from the bike. Okay, so obviously what I need to do is get the, uh, get the brand new one out and these little brackets need to be transferred onto the new one. Okay, here's the two lines. As you can see, they are the same length. Now, what I need to do is I need to transfer these brackets off of this line onto this one, and they will just pop off with a little bit of, a little bit of persuasion. Like so, and then these little bushes should come off again with a little bit of persuasion just like so and I'll do the same for the others and then these can all be reused on the new cable uh, sorry the new hoot even I mean it's not entirely necessary to run the hose through these through these brackets if you don't want to but the brackets will need to be used because they uh, serve other purposes within the within the bike so that's the uh, one thing I will say
That one didn't want to come off, there we go. Right, that bush there, um, I don't think I'm gonna get that off. Um, to be perfectly honest, I think that one's on there for good. Right, that can be thrown to one side. And what we'll do now is have a look at getting these uh, getting these bushes on. Now obviously I need to get the orientation of them correct. And that one was in like so, so it went in that way. So I need to put it in that way around. So, same for this one, it was in like that because the idle speed adjuster went into that little slot. Okay, there we go. Right, what I need to do now is obviously feed it back up into the bike. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to feed this in through here that way. Um, there's less likelihood of this getting entangled in all of us under here. So if I go in through there, then we're already halfway there with that one. Pop that one up there, and then this one goes down here. Now, I need to get these roughly in the right place. Okay, so let's feed this hose up to where it needs to be. You can just about see the hole in the frame. You can see the light coming through. And here we go, here she comes. There we are, and there's the other end of the hose. Okay, so now we've got the hassle of getting all of these bolted back down to where they're supposed to be. So what I'll do, I'll crack on and get those three bolts in, in these little brackets, and then we'll bring it back in when I'm ready to, uh, when we're ready to do the next stage. Okay, that is the three brackets reinstalled. This one and this one, um, the installation was fairly painless. Uh, they went in fairly easily, um, much the same way that they came out. However, the one at the front was a right nightmare. Um, there's very little access in here. And once you've um, got the bracket in the right place, you literally on fingertips trying to get the bolts in. You may have more success lifting the tank, taking the airbox off to be perfectly honest. I didn't do that, I just persevered, but I got there in the end. Okay. Idle speed adjuster back in its little recess. What I'm going to do next is connect this end of the hose. I've got the brand new stainless banjo bolts that came in the kit and two copper washers, which again also came in the kit. Just get her in position and bolt her up. Okay, what I've got for this job, I've got a six-sided socket. Um, I want to use a six-sided socket on this, really, because um, I'm less likely to mar the head of the bolt up than I am with the 12-point. So what I'm going to do is just give it a little nip up, and that's probably going to be tight enough. Um, obviously, we'll check for leaks when we come to bleeding and everything, um, but at the moment, that's probably going to be fine. Right then, now what we need to do is move on to the handlebar end. Okay then, handlebar end. What I'm going to do is feed it through the forks. And obviously, she's going to come up to here, just like so. But I'm going to take it around the front of all the cables, like that. There we go, that feels, that feels much better. It feels a lot, like there's a lot less resistance in it. And 
yeah, I can turn the bars with, with it in that position. So, next banjo bolt. And just like the previous one, a washer on either side. And just send it up to touch. Right, hang on. There's like a little shoulder on the bolt that, there we go. The shoulder needs to be inside the banjo, otherwise you'll, you'll tighten it down wrong. And then we are. Grab my ratchet and just give that a nip up. And that's probably tight enough. I don't want to over tighten it. Right then, next job is to. Um, in fact, I was going to bleed it, but I'm not. What I need to do first, actually, is get the little bracket on that goes on the side of the frame. So I'll grab the bracket and the little bolt, and we'll um, we'll whack that on. Okay, this little bit here is for all the cables, and this rounded bit is where the uh, the brake line is going through. And I'll just pop it in position and fit the bolt. Now the uh, the brake uh, the clutch hose, should I say, is not being clamped by this in the same way that the previous one was. It is free to move. Um, but it's not free to move so much that it, it can flap around all over the place. It's still held behind behind the bracket. Just grab a 10mm socket. And just tighten that up. And there we go. Right then. Just check that I've got a good lock. Yeah, lock to lock. It's perfectly fine and there's no there's no undue pressure on the hose lock to lock as we can see. Right then, what I need to do next is obviously fill the system with fluid and bleed her through. What I am going to do um, is I'm going to give the inside of the reservoir a little clean out just to get rid of any gunge and residue that does form in here. And believe it or not, this isn't that old. I only fitted this reservoir to this bike around six months ago, and there's still already a bit of gunge in it. But that could have been left over in the lines or, or something like that, I guess. Right, anyway, that looks nice and clean now. Yeah, that looks nice and good. Right, what I'm gonna do, grab some, uh, grab some brake fluid and uh, we'll top it up and start bleeding it through. Okay. Put a bit of paper towel down underneath the reservoir to catch any drops that I may spill, which isn't beyond the realm of possibility. Okay. Right. What I like to do, I like to decant my brake fluid into this jug because it gives you a bit more control when it comes to filling the reservoir. So let's get some fluid in the reservoir. Okay, right, there we go. What I've done right now is massively overfilled it because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the fluid down into the lines. I'm gonna give the master cylinder a couple of little pumps just to draw a little bit of fluid in and a couple of bubbles came out. Right, what I need to do next is pop the little rubber cap off. The bleed nipple, put my spanner on and my tool, get a vacuum up whoops, Let's pop it back on again, get a vacuum up and then just crack her off and maintain the vacuum. Keeping an eye on the level in the reservoir, which is dropping quite rapidly and 
close the nipple. Okay, now we drew quite a bit of fluid through there quite fast. We are expelling a little bit of air up through the top of the reservoir. Right, what I'm going to do, top her up and then give it another quick bleed through. Again. Keeping an eye on the reservoir. You can see the fluid coming through the tool and I can see the level dropping in the reservoir. And close her off again. Right. Let's quickly check the lever. Right, yeah, we're all good, it looks good. I can't see any more air coming out of the master cylinder. And looking inside the clutch cover, I can see that the clutch is activating. So we're all good. Right, what I need to do now is just pop the cover back onto the brake reservoir. Little spacer, oops, drop the lid on the floor. And there we go. And then just mop up any potential spirits around the master cylinder. Ah, we're all good okay only thing that remains is for me to pop the little rubber cap back on the bleed nipple and give it a little wipe down around here now what I want to do is just check to make sure that there's no leaks from either of the banjos and they both look good they both look good okay that was the job done. A um, bit of a fiddly um, job to do on this particular bike uh, because of all the little brackets that are inside the frame. But other than that, it was, uh, it was pretty straightforward and no different to any other um, clutch line on any other bike. Um, anyway, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, give it a like, give it a thumbs up and um, hit that subscribe button and hopefully we'll see you, um, see you back at the channel again very soon. Thank you very much for stopping by. Bye bye now, guys.